Right, number one then, the first question, the 2023 National 5 Maths Paper 2. So quick sketch, just going through them fairly quickly here, just the stages as I would go through them. So what's the first bit? There's that compound percentage question. A caravan was bought for 20,000, so I've called that V0. Now depreciate, it goes down. So if it's going down 11%, that means you're left with 89%. That would be a factor of 0.89. It now goes down another 6%. Losing 6% means you've only got 94% left. That's a factor of 0.94. So what would happen if you did that once and that twice? What would its value be after three years? Well, it'd be the 20,000 multiplied by the 0.89. That takes off 11% the first year. Multiplied by 0.94, that takes off 6%, then either times that again or squared. Whichever you like, and then press the buttons, and there's your three marks. So that gives you 15728.08. But then we say, so what's its value going to be? So it's in pounds, I'll put the pounds back in. So certainly 15,000, certainly 700, but you're not going to put in pence. Even put it to the nearest pound seems a bit excessive for the value after three years, but I'll put that down anyway. Number two, mass of a helium atom. 6.64 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. A flask has got 300 grams, so how many helium atoms is that? You want the answer in scientific notation, and you can use your calculator. So you can just trust it to do it for you. Correct to three significant figures for three marks. Well, if that's the mass of one little atom, and then the mass of the whole lot is 300 grams, that means the number must be 300 divided by the mass of just one of them, which is 6.64 times 10 to the negative 24. And of course, there'll be no units because it's just a number. Your calculator will probably give you that answer the way you want it. So just typing that in and using the EXP button gives you the answer in scientific notation. 4.518 and so on times 10 to the power and it goes plus 25, so that's 25. So to three significant figures, that would be 4.52 times 10 to the 25. And you don't even need to show any working. You, know, you could have done that, divided by that, and known that that was a times 10 to the 24. And then when that went in more than 10 times, you'd have moved another point, but that does. Number three, three marks for what's the length of this arc? You've got this sector of a circle, there's a slice of a circle, 160 degrees in it. Its radius is 9.15, so what's that distance for that arc? Well, it's a fraction of a circle. AB, that arc, will be whatever fraction of a circle you've got, which is 106 out of the 360 degrees. It'll be that fraction of the total circumference, which is pi d or 2 pi r. So it's 106 over 360 times 2 pi times 9.15. Then you press the buttons and there you go. So that gives you, take the decimal, 16.927 and so on. So you could either, that's got three figures in it, you can either just go for three figures, 16.9, or assume that that's completely accurate, you could go for the same as that, two decimal places. I think I'll just stick with 16.9 here, metres. Number four, calculate the size of angle J K L. J to K to L, that's this one here. So that's the straightforward one because that's the pairing with the 10. It's going to be the sine rule then. But I think I'll put the sine rule the other way around because it's the angle I want. So I'm going to start off with the unknown in this position. The sine of K over its partner length, which is 10, will be the pair that you know, the sine of 25, over its partner length, 7, and then just rearrange that. So sine k will be 10 
sine 25.7. You may well have put it the other way around to begin with, but I'm just starting off with what I want. You could do it in one go. You could just say k is inverse sine of all that and get the answer in one go. I don't know if that's been a bit greedy. So doing it in two stages would be do that calculation, 0 0.6037 and so on. It's stored there, of course. And then I can say k is going to be, well, I'll go back to what k actually is, so JKL is going to be inverse sine of 0 0.6037 and so on, or you may have rounded it off at that point. But just storing it in answer and using that, I've got 37.138 and so on. So I'll call that 37.1 degrees. Number five is not an awful lot to this. Calculate the size of the shaded angle, which is this angle here. So it's obviously 90 plus whatever this is. And it says it's a decagon, so it's split into 10 parts. So out of the 360 degrees that you've got available, each of those will take up, divide by 10, 36 degrees. That must be one of the marks. So that's 36 degrees. Now, immediately, as soon as that's there, well, not really immediately, but sort of, as soon as that's 36, that's 36. Because to get these two, you would take 36 from 180. That would be the sum of those two. But since these are congruent, identical isosceles triangles, those two are also whatever each, which means the sum of these two will also be 180 minus it. So 180 minus those two must give you 36 back. That just means the angle must be 90 plus 36, which is 126 degrees. I suppose if you want, it had to put in working, you would have to say something like 180 minus 36 is 144, which would make them 72 each. And then do the same again, 180, but it's pretty pointless, minus 144 takes you back to the 36. Number six, a little reverse percentage here. Bought a flat for a certain value, don't know what that value is, but it increased by 100 by 8%. So that meant 108% of the value was 94,500. So what was the actual original value? Well, that will just be 94,500 divided by that. And of course, 108% written as a decimal is 1.08. And that gives you 87,500. So number seven, change the subject of the formula to M. Well, it just means you want M on its own over here. I think I'll just write it backwards. Could do multiply by three first, but I won't. One third of MN, reading it this way, would be the P plus the R. So I've just taken that over and added it and read it backwards. So to get M on its own, I just want rid of these two parts. So take the three across and multiply. 3P in brackets plus R would be the best way to put it, or the better way to put it, divided by N. That's it. Number eight, wooden beams used to support a wall, right? It gives you the dimensions of the three parts, eight, seven, and four, etc., etc. Determine whether that's keeping the wall perpendicular to the ground and justify your answer for four marks. Well, that's just, is this a right angle then? Does Pythagoras work? Well, just check it. Is the square of this side is AB squared, which is eight squared, which is 64, the same as the other two sides? AC squared plus CB squared, which would be 7 squared and 4 squared, which would be 49 and 16, which in fact comes to 65. Are they the same? No. Well, it's not. That's basically the question, isn't it? You have to write it the big spiel. So you'd have to say this. AB squared is not equal to AC squared plus CB squared as 
64 is not equal to 65. In fact, that tells you more than that. 64 being less than that means it's slightly acute, it's leaning to the right, but it doesn't ask for that. But then you finish off by having to, by saying it, you'd have to state it all. By the converse of Pythagoras, ACB is not a right angle. And then maybe you could even add a bit like, so the wall is not perpendicular to the ground. Number nine, what's the volume of that block there is all it should have said and you'd have to figure out it was a large pyramid, take away a small pyramid, but it starts off by telling you that. Gives you the dimensions, they're both square based. The large one's 90, the smaller one's 40. It gives you the different heights here and you've just to work out this volume. So it's just, what's the volume of the large bit, the large pyramid? It's a third area of base times height. Same for them both. So that'll be a third of, the base is a 90 by 90 square. And the height of the big one is the 60 and the 48, so that's 108. So you pop that in, and that gives you 291600 centimetres cubed. At least there's no rounding off needed here. Volume of the small one, well it's just identically set out. Only it's 40 this time, 40 by 40. By, and its height's only the 48. So that gives you a 25,600 centimetres cubed, which means for the block, it's going to be the difference between the two. 291,600 minus 25,600. So that'll be 266,000 centimetres cubed, which may well do for the answer, or 266 litres.